Hello, I'm Dr. Russell Homan, both a board certified pediatrician and lactation consultant, and I'm bringing you another episode of The Lost Art of Pediatrics, where I share practical, proven guidance that pediatricians are often too busy to share in their short 10 to 15 minute visits. And like all my videos, there will be a downloadable guide at my Tallahassee office's website, canopypediatrics.com. Now today's episode will be about positioning, body positioning for the cradle hold. Now everyone always wants to skip to the latch. Is the baby's mouth open far enough? Is there enough breasts in the baby's mouth? These may be things that we need to address, but first, if we do not have the breastfeeding parent's body positioned, this will throw the whole thing off and make everything much more difficult. So today we're gonna to get started on the right foot and show you the best way to be positioned. And today we will be focusing on the cradle hold, but everything you learn can be applied to the other holds, which will be addressed in later videos. Now, I have made an acronym to make this more easily remembered. It's SOS. Yes, and often breastfeeding mothers are in need of help. So the first step, S, stands for semi-reclined position. O stands for open shoulders and chest, and S stands for skin to skin. So now let's start on the video, but first I want you to know that we were lucky enough to have a live breastfeeding mother demonstrate for us, and her breasts and nipples are plainly visible. Let's get started. So let's begin where we want to end up with an example of a great cradle hold. In addition to SOS positioning, I'm gonna mention many characteristics of a good holder latch that will not be covered in this video, but I think it will help you understand why SOS positioning is so important. These topics will be covered in later videos. Now, in our breastfeeding mother, observe how the three characteristics of the SOS positioning are present. She's kind of laying back in a semi-reclined position her shoulders and chest are open, and she is skin to skin with her baby. Now for the positive latch traits. Notice that the baby's weight is on top of the mother, that the baby's spine is in a nice straight alignment starting from his head going all the way to his bottom, and that his cheeks are against his mother's breast, and his chin is buried deep into his mother's breast, making it hard to see his lips. These are just a few of the positive latch characteristics that SOS positioning supports and encourages. So now that we've seen what we're working towards, now let's look at each aspect of SOS positioning in depth. Semi-reclined positioning is achieved by laying back 30 to 45 degrees like you were sitting in your grandparents' recliner. Not only is the semi-reclined position comfortable for repetitive nursing sessions, but it also enables the baby to rest her weight against the nursing parent's chest and brings the nipples upward so that they are more accessible to the baby. O stands for open shoulders and chest, which again is comfortable, but also brings the breasts out and keeps the nipples upward for the baby and keeps the arms out of the baby's way. And the last S is for skin to skin contact. This comforts the baby, activates the breast to produce more milk, and activates the baby's own natural nursing reflexes. In the picture, you can see that she will maximize skin-to-skin -skin contact by nursing without a bra or top. She will also have the baby covered only by a diaper. If a nursing parent is in a situation where clothing is absolutely necessary, it is very helpful to at least have the baby's face, nose, cheeks, and chin make good contact with the bare breast. Now that we've gone over SOS in detail, let's look at some comparisons. Now compare the pictures on the left, where she is in the semi-reclined position, to the images on the right, where she is sitting up and even hunched over. Wouldn't you agree that she does not look comfortable at all? Notice how her shoulders are rotated forwards and inwards, her arms are moved more forward, and her body is curled forward, which results in her breast being aimed somewhat downward. I see so many breastfeeding mothers in this hunched over position 
And boy, this causes many problems. First, haven't we all felt our necks and backs begin to hurt when we've been hunched over staring at our smartphones? And for me, this pain can happen in five minutes. Gosh, imagine that babies nurse six to 12 times per day, which for newborns can be almost half the day. If a mother's gonna be spending three to eight hours per day nursing, they need to find a comfortable position. Next, having the body straight up or hunched over will lead to latch problems that I will get into more thoroughly in later videos. But I think it'll help you if I mention four of the problems now. And these are all related and will lead to a vicious cycle, making things worse and worse. So first and most obvious is that the mother's nipples are just harder to get to. Instead of up in plain sight, now they are sort of tucked underneath. A mother could lay the baby on the baby's back facing up and try to bring the baby up to her breasts, which some women do try, but this is just awkward, uncomfortable, and as we'll see later, usually leads to a poor latch and nursing pain. And this last detail is very important, so I'm going to elaborate on it a little bit more. Research and experience has shown that babies nurse better when the front of their body, their chest, their stomach, and face are pressed firmly against their mother, usually held there by their own weight. Gravity should be holding the front of the baby against the mother, not pulling the baby away from the mother. And this comes natural in the semi-reclined position, as gravity is working to press the front of the baby against the mother's breast and upper torso, which is happening as you can see in the bottom middle picture. Now the position of the mother is semi-reclined, not completely flat, and as you can see in the bottom middle picture, the mother is still having to hold the baby, but much of the baby's weight is still pressing against his mother. What we don't want is the top middle picture. The mother is in the hunched over position and gravity is literally pulling the baby away from the breast, causing the baby's weight to be transmitted through the baby's back into the mother's lap, rather than helping to press and hold the front of the baby against the mother. So try not to fight against gravity. When the baby's weight is pulling the baby away from the breast, as in the top middle picture, latch problems and breast pain are likely to occur. Now look at this fifth picture with the arrows. Babies nurse best when the nipple and the baby's head are in a straight alignment. Can you see how much easier this will be when the breasts are pointed upwards rather than downwards? This alignment will also be discussed in later videos. But what most mothers naturally do when the breasts are pointed downwards is to use their hands to move the nipples up to the baby. Now the mother, with her breasts in her hands, can usually help guide the nipple and breasts into the baby's mouth. Now many mothers have success holding the breast, often with the so-called sandwich technique, which you now see in the top middle picture. But as I will discuss in later videos, often the sandwich causes more problems than it helps. Here I will only discuss the main problem. It happens in either one, the mother sees that the baby is eating well and has the nipple in her mouth, so she stops holding up the breast, or two, when the mother's arm gets tired, her arm will naturally start to move downward. Imagine if the mother in the top middle picture stopped holding up her breast and let it fall downwards. The baby will begin to feel this as the breast starting to pull out of her mouth. Now if you were a baby, can you imagine having to both suck the milk from the breast and have to try to keep the breast from falling out of your mouth at the same time? So what do babies do when they feel the breast sliding from their mouths? What would you do? Usually they bite down to try and stop the breast from sliding out of their mouths. Ouch! Obviously, this causes lots of nipple pain and damage. Or sometimes, especially younger babies, they might not suck as long as they should, leading to poor weight gain, which of course will lead to a lot of parental stress and anxiety. These things do not always happen, but they are common problems associated with holding the breast. Going back to problems related to the positioning of the breastfeeding parent, notice in the pictures on the right how the mother's arms are near her breasts. Babies nurse best when they can freely move their head around and do not have arms or clothing obstructing the movement of their head. They just really don't like objects making contact with their heads. 
Now notice in the top middle picture how the baby's head is clear of objects and would be free to move all over. So in summary, for the cradle hold, try to follow SOS where S stands for the semi-reclined position, O stands for open shoulders and chest, and S stands for skin to skin. And stay tuned as the next videos in the series will focus on the latch, which I have touched on in part during this video. And like SOS, I have another acronym to help nursing parents obtain a great latch. The four A's, against, align, allow, and adjust. Again, don't forget to visit my Tallahassee office's website, canopypediatrics.com, where you can download the accompanying guide for today's video. On the website, you can also view other educational videos, join my weekly newsletter, and read my blog. I'm also accepting a limited number of patients into my personal concierge practice, where we can work on breastfeeding and other issues together in person. See you again soon.